So a couple of days ago, Brix released the 1.8 beta with several updates and changes. But one of the key features that I want to take a very quick look at today is the Mega Menu feature. Now, this isn't an in-depth tutorial. This is a first look just to demonstrate how you'd start to work with it. Now, if you want to check out Thomas's video, which I would recommend, which covers pretty much everything in this beta release and update, I'll put a link in the description down below. And if you're watching this after 1.8 ships, well, all of this is going to be final. Okay, so what exactly are we talking about? Let's take a very quick look. I've knocked up a very simple example. If we come over the drop down and click, you'll see we now get a mega menu, a full screen mega menu with well, whatever layout you kind of want to put inside it. I've done something pretty simple and straightforward, but it demonstrates how this all works. So let's hop over to the back end now and see how Bricks is actually going to handle dealing with mega menus. So this is the back end, this is the header section, and if we take a look on the right hand side and expand this out, you'll see inside there we've got what you'd normally expect, your container, your several blocks for your left and your right hand sections. However, if we open the second one up, which contains our navigation, you'll see we've got a new element called nav nestable. If we expand this out, you can see this is broken down into various different sections. So let's get rid of what we have here and let's start from fresh, just so I can demonstrate how this all works. Okay, so I've removed the right hand section, we've got rid of that nav nestable. So if we come over now to the left hand side, scroll through, you'll find we have some new options, things like nav nestable, like we've just seen, drop down, off canvas, toggle, and so on. These are the new features that have been added. And like I say, check out Thomas's video that will go through all of these in a lot more detail. What we're going to look at is the nav nestable. So what I'm going to do is simply drag that into our right hand block. And you can see that now gives us our nav nestable. If we expand this out, you can see there's a couple of pre built features. You've got a couple of nav links, which are basically a simple navigation link that you can link up to whatever you want, your home page, internal pages, and so on. The drop down is basically where all the action actually happens. And if we expand that out, you can see we've got a content and inside there we've got a couple of links. Well, we can get rid of things inside there and we can start from fresh and do whatever we want with this. So let's go ahead, first of all, come into our nav items and set the colors so we can see what we're dealing with. So go to our styles and we come into our typography. Let's set our color to be white. And now we can start to see that navigation a little better. If we come over the content under drop down, you can see this gives us this little kind of box area. And that's fine. However, we want a little bit more than that. So we're going to do first of all is get rid of these links because we don't need them. So now that we've got rid of those, we need to go ahead and tell it we want this to be a mega menu. So what we're going to do is select the drop down, which is the kind of parent for the different kinds of menus we can create. And then we're going to go to the left hand side and you can see we've got mega menu and multi level. We're going to check men mega menu enable that. So now if we come into content, we've now got this full width area. That's basically our mega menu and we can put whatever we want inside there. So first of all, let's go and set this up to kind of have a basic layout like we've just seen. We're going to come over to the option to set up the basic block layouts and inside here, we're going to set this to be a 67 33 split. So we've got our main area on the left hand side, less on the right hand side. Now you'll notice if we take a look, you can see this is sitting just a little bit up inside the actual header section. So what we need to do is choose our content block and we're going to come over to our style into layout and we're going to add a little bit of margin. Let's try something like 20 to start off with. That looks like that works pretty well. We're also while we're in the content section, we're going to come over and we're going to just put a bit of drop shadow on here so we can see a little bit better. So we're going to border kind of box shadow we will set our Y to be 10 pixels, our blur to be 20 and our spread to be 10. And we'll set a background color. I like to sort of set something quite dark like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the transparency so we can get a more subtle kind of effect. Okay, so we've now created the basic layout for our kind of mega menu section. What we're going to do finally is set the content. I'm going to set the background color on here. We're going to set this to be pretty much the same as our hero section, which I believe is this one, our head and section, sorry. And you can see now we've basically created our mega menu. So now that we've got our background color set up, the next thing I want to do is put some containers into the left hand section. And this is where we're going to put in some content. So if we come back over to our demo page and we open up our drop down, you can see inside there we've got this sort of text and we've got a couple of different columns. So first of all, let's go and grab our text and pop that in. So we'll just copy the title from here, head back over, add in, first of all, just a normal heading. We'll position that inside our left hand column. 
And what we're going to do is simply go and add in the text we've just copied. And we're going to set the back, the color of that, in this example, to be white. And we're also going to come back into our first column and add a bit of space around this. So we're coming to layout. And we're going to add, say, 50 pixels of padding just to give us a bit of breathing space. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again now. We're going to go and add a new element in. We're going to add in some basic text. We'll pop that underneath. We'll copy the content from here. Paste that inside there. And if you want to, we can adjust the styling. So let's just set that to be safe, for example. Okay, so we basically set up the starting. So the next thing we want to do, now we've got our basic text in, we want to put the three columns in. So for example, if we come back over to our demo, you can see there's our three columns. And let's just come back in and do pretty much exactly the same as we've just done. So first of all, let's add in a block. That's going to sit inside there. And inside our block, we're going to add in a couple of divs. So we'll select our block, add a couple of divs in, add three in there. We'll set our block, make sure it's selected. We'll set our block now over to be working in horizontal. And what we need to do then is just go and set the size of our divs up. So now we've got our three divs and we've set everything up. Let's come into our first div, come into style, into layout and set this to be 33%. We'll copy that and then we'll just do the same for the next two. Okay, so we now have our three divs inside there. Come back to our block, put a bit of margin about this. So we'll say something like 30 pixels above, and we'll put 30 pixels below as well to give us plenty of breathing space. And now we can just put what we want inside these relevant different sections. So if we come and select our first div, come over, and we're going to just choose the icon box, add an icon box in, and then we can just customize the look of this the way that we want. So I'm not going to bore you now by making you watch me set all of these up. I've showed you the first one. You kind of see how it all works. So I'm going to quickly just go and add a few of those in so everything is done. And there we go. That's basically all there is to it. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Once you've configured and set up your drop down or drop downs, if you want multiple inside your navigation, you simply go ahead and set what you want inside there with all the normal tools you have as part of Bricks Builder anyway. So you can get as creative as you want and create any kind of mega menu that you want using this. Now for me, this is very, very simple. I don't have a lot of use cases for a mega menu, but it's always good to see that being included, especially when it's set up to work so simple and such a straightforward way. And like I say, all the tools you're used to working with bricks are already included and you just drop those in there to create what you want. But as always, I'd love to get your feedback. How do you think this compares to the competition? Is it good, bad? Would you like to see more? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. Please do check out Thomas's video. It goes into a lot more detail than I do. And as always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care. Thank you.